Before we get into our training video, if by chance you found this video as a recommended video on YouTube, this training video is actually part of an extensive Corel Draw for Beginners training series from AdvancedTShirts.com. We have developed dozens of videos and we also have available on our website downloadable work along files that you can work with in Corel Draw while you're working through the training videos. Easily the best and fastest way to learn. If these videos are helpful to you, please take a second to add a like to the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when we upload new video content. And of course, in the comment section below, you can post your questions or your Corel Draw video tutorial requests. We'll call this session the Transparency Tool Part 2. Gonna get into some really nice interactive functionality in Corel Draw with the fountain transparency. And there's four different modes for that transparency. There's linear, elliptical, conical, and rectangular. Honestly, I almost never use rectangular or conical, but I do use elliptical and linear very frequently. We want to understand how they work in good detail so that we can use them effectively in our graphic design process. Here I have a basic transparency setup, and that's actually a graphic to demonstrate that. And transparency works going from white to black throughout the grayscale. So as you go from white to 50% grayscale, you get 50% transparency in the fountain transparency. So it goes in steps. I'll go to the transparency tool here beneath the interactive tool, select that, come and click here and you'll see that. Here where it's white, there's no transparency, it's zero. Here where it's 10% gray, 10% transparency. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and then where it's pure black, it's 100% transparent. So we want to be aware of that because of the levels of transparency we want when we're working with the fountain transparency and where the level of transparency is. Pure black 100% sliding back through black into white 0% transparency. Scroll down here and here I have a transparency setup on this design. Now here we have the transparency endpoint and the transparency start point. And here's the transparency midpoint, just like the fountain fill tool for color. Now here I have the racing design. Here I have copied on top of it a contour with a darker color fill. And you can see the effect. If I start here at the bottom and let's select that left click hold and pull I'll automatically go to a linear fountain transparency now here we have the angle control arm and I can rotate that and change the angle of the linear fountain transparency I'll zoom in here here we have the midpoint and we can pull that forward or pull that back to make an adjustment we can also, like the fountain fill tool for the color, left click on the line and move the transparency around. We can also double click on the line. Make sure I've got this selected on the line, double click. Now I've added a transparency node. Now let's bring this down to zero which is pure white. I'll come here, select this transparency node, left click and bring that up to a black. Come here, bring this down to zero, and I've got a different effect going on here. Or bring that up, and now the purple is showing through the middle, but there's transparency here at the end and at the starting transparency nodes, and I can add all the transparency nodes that I want to in the fountain transparency. And I could move this and you'll see the effect and the change. So you can really dial in our transparency effects easily and interactively working in Corel Draw to get different looks in our designs. And you can see the difference between 
just this plain bevel effect, but then bringing in the transparency effect. So transparency effects are very important. You'll want to practice with them and really learn how to use them in your workflow. Here I've got a grape and I did some shading and highlighting on this working with the radial transparency. I just took the grapes and added them into this graphic. And then I could just go through and start piling them in here and make that look like a shaded dimensional grape clip art using the radial transparency on the grape. We'll take a look at how we did that. There we've got the shading and there we've got the highlight. Now you can't see that because it's a white color. But I could take this grape object and I'll duplicate this here, zoom in. I will copy and paste that, fill it with a white go to the transparency tool, go to the fountain transparency, and change this to radial. Now we can see there's the highlight starting to come in. And this is interactive differently than the linear because we're working with a radial. And I can just like working with the fill, change the handles and move things around. And bring this over let's say this way like this now let's say I don't want this as white as it is I can go to its transparency and let some of the grape color come through and now I have a highlighting effect then I could take that same object I'll have to go back to my pick tool now often you want to go to the pick tool instead of trying to work with a transparency tool to change colors and things because it doesn't work very well I'll take this object, copy that, paste that. I'm going to change the color to a darker blue. You can't see that, but I'll go over here. Now, because of the transparency, I'll go back to the transparency tool. Now, this is 100% transparent. This is 36% transparent. I'm going to bring that down here and then bring this up this way. And you can see that starting to have an effect on the shading. And I can bring this in a little bit more transparent to affect that. And we can see that there. And now I have like a shading and highlighting that I set up on the purple ellipse for a grape. Select that, group it, and I could just go and start adding the grapes to my graphics. So I've been able to add dimension or depth to that working with transparency. So that's an introduction to the fountain transparency. I use it quite frequently. You'll want to practice with it and really get it down and then really think about how you can use it creatively in your graphic design process. We'll wrap here and continue in our next video session.